A lot of you have been asking me to cover the Restrict Act. This is proposed legislation that most people think is just a law that's going to ban TikTok. And this bill actually has bipartisan support right now. Members of both sides have come out in support for the classic reason to protect the children. But just like every other law that's passed with child safety being the excuse for it, really, that's just being used as a scapegoat. Raising your kids is not Uncle Sam's job, and if you've seen some of the people that he hangs around with, you would be smart to keep him as far away from your kids as possible. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a huge fan of kids being on TikTok or really any social media for that matter. I think it's really easy to get addicted to social media. And of course, addictions in general are much easier to develop and they tend to be much more severe if they are developed in a person's youth. And on top of that, social media gives some people a very warped perspective of the world. And I've seen this happen to adults as well, but it's 10 times worse for kids, especially these days where so many people are just giving their kids a smartphone and basically letting the smartphone raise them, right? It's like, here, take this and go play on it and get out of my face. And TikTok seems like it really tries to market itself to children. All of these kids that are just being given a smartphone without any restrictions set on it by the parents are probably gonna end up installing TikTok as one of their first social media apps before they end up getting Instagram, Snapchat, or YouTube. And the targeting of children by TikTok is especially concerning for children that are in the US where the content that's being pushed to them is much more dumbed down and it's a lot more lewd compared to what is being shown to kids on Chinese TikTok. I think if kids are under 14 or something like that and they're using the Chinese version of TikTok, they're automatically going to be pushed all of this educational content. And when you see this firsthand, it's pretty easy to see why so many people are viewing TikTok as a propaganda tool that the CCP is using to brainwash our kids. But if we actually take a look at this bill, we can see that it's not really about banning TikTok. It's about trying to legislate control over what you can see on the internet, over what you can do on the internet. Just like how the Patriot Act wasn't really about fighting terrorists, it was about passing legislation that gave the government the legal authority to spy on all of our emails, all of our phone calls and text messages, and also force companies to backdoor their applications, giving the government real-time access to pretty much all the information on your device, or at least all the information that the app can access depending on its permission settings. And the company that's supposed to control this app can't even legally tell their customers that this is happening either. So to understand this bill, we have to go through some of the definitions that are outlined and translate this kind of vague legalese into plain English. So under section two definitions, we have this thing called a covered holding, means regardless of how or when such holding was or will be obtained or otherwise come to have been held, a controlling holding held directly or indirectly in an ICTS covered holding entity by a foreign adversary, an entity subject to the jurisdiction of or organized under the laws of a foreign adversary, or an entity owned, directed, or controlled by an entity described in subparagraphs one or two. So a foreign adversary is pretty easy to understand, but these other two parts where we talk about entities, okay, we have to go down to section six to get a definition of that. So the term entity means any of the following, whether established in the United States or outside of the United States, a firm, a government, government agency, government department, or government commission, a labor union, a fraternal or social organization, a partnership, a trust, a joint venture, a corporation, a group, subgroup, or any association or organization, whether or not organized for profit. So an entity is pretty much 
any kind of conceivable business group that could be formed. And then you also have like a fraternal or social organization or an organization, whether or not it's organized for profit. So it's actually even broader than that. Uh, and then when we start getting into the definitions of our foreign adversaries, so any kind of these groups that are associated with foreign adversaries, which is defined down here, meaning any foreign government or regime determined by the secretary pursuant to sections three and five to have engaged in long-term pattern or serious instances of conduct significantly adverse to the national security of the United States or the security and safety of United States persons. So this part here is starting to reveal what this bill is really about. So when they talk about things that are going to be adverse to the national security of the United States or the security and safety of United States persons, they're talking about the effects that social media and these apps can have on things like election results and to a broader extent, the effect that social media can have on American culture because there's over 150 million Americans on TikTok. Actually, it's 150 million Americans that use TikTok on at least a monthly basis. And this country in particular is already conditioned by social media. The concept of social media, at least how we define it today, literally started in America. MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, these are all American companies. And of course, they work closely with the American government. Maybe not as closely as a Chinese company would have to, but if you don't think that Facebook or Twitter have cooperated and coordinated with the US government to promote its interest, both foreign and domestic, then you've completely lost the plot. So what this is really about is the fact that now the most popular social media app, AKA the most popular propaganda tool, is no longer controlled by America. It's controlled by China. And it's no surprise that when we go to section B, where we start getting uh, specific definitions of adversaries. By the way, another thing that I'm gonna point out in A before I really move on to B, is uh, when they define foreign adversary, it means any foreign government or regime determined by the secretary. So you're gonna see this a lot throughout this bill where things can be interpreted and determined by the secretary a lot. Like it's largely up to this person's interpretation. Uh, but anyway, People's Republic of China, obviously that's gonna be number one listed as our primary adversary. The Republic of Cuba, the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, the Democratic, Repu uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the Russian Federation, and uh, Venezuela under the regime of Maduro. And of course, as new boogeymen arise in the world, they're going to be added to this list as well. Now, social media is not the only kind of technology that this bill would apply to. Uh, specifically, this bill is applying to ICTS covered holding entity. The term ICTS covered entity holding or ICTS covered holding entity means any entity that owns, controls, or manages information and communications technologies, products, or services, and has not less than 1 million United States based annual active users at any point during the year period preceding the date on which the covered holding is referred to the president or for which more than 1 million units have been sold to persons in the United States before the date on which the covered holding is referred to the president. So it applies to anything that owns, controls, manages information and communications technologies, which is pretty much gonna be anything that has a CPU in it, any platform, any kind of code running anywhere uh, that has, not less than 1 million, so at least 1 million uh, US-based annual visitors. So you only have to use it one time within the year and then that counts as a visitor. And when you think about it, there is a whole lot of stuff that would fall under this category, right? Because a million per year is, is not really a high number, right? Like you think about all those random apps in the app store that you would use with like a Bluetooth speaker or some other cheap electronic that someone might buy from Wish that 
people just use once and then uninstall it, right? They buy it, they use it, they're like, oh, this thing sucks, they throw it in the garbage, but that's one use within a year. So any hardware or software that's coming from any of our adversaries that has been used at any time in a year by at least a million Americans is going to apply to this. And we actually have a detailed outline uh, of technologies, I believe under section five. Uh, yeah, so they start listing things like, you know, wireless networks, mobile networks, satellite payloads, cable access points, um, internet hosting services, cloud-based or distributed computing and data storage, desktop applications, mobile applications, gaming, quantum key distribution. Again, anything to do with technology, essentially. Now, in section three, we have definitions of the undue or the unacceptable risks that these applications and services might pose. So they, if they pose an undue or unacceptable risk of sabotage or subversion of the design, integrity, and manufacturing, production, distribution, installation, operation, or maintenance of information and communications technology products and services in the United States, catastrophic effects on the security or resilience of the critical infrastructure or digital economy of the United States, interfering in or altering the result or reported result of a federal election as determined in coordination with the Attorney General, the Director of National Intelligence, the Secretary of Treasury, and the Federal Election Commissioner. So this is the one that people in the government are probably most concerned with, along with D, coercive or criminal activities by a foreign adversary that are designed to undermine democratic processes and institutions or steer policy and regulatory decisions in favor of the strategic objectives of a foreign adversary to the detriment of the national security of the United States as determined in coordination with the Attorney General, the Director of Intelligence, Secretary of Treasury, and blah, blah, blah. So basically, Anything that a foreign adversary might do to goad people into voting for something or for asking for something, you know, pushing for things that would give our adversaries a strategic advantage. And look, obviously, these are things to be concerned about because almost half of the U.S. population is on TikTok. And like I said, people are easily influenced by social media. But criminalizing these applications isn't going to fix things. For one, it doesn't actually solve the real problem here of people being easily influenced sheep by foreign social media applications. Propaganda wars have been going on forever. And so you're only removing one form of spreading propaganda. There's still going to be other ones that exist and people are still going to fall for it unless something is done to, I guess, try to move society away, you know, United States society away from being so influenced by social media in the first place. And also this bill would be really unfair to the millions of people that use these applications, these platforms, and these technologies responsibly for fun without dedicating their entire lives to them or for the people that are using them for business. There's lots of eyes on a platform like TikTok, something like one in two Americans are on it, so it would make sense that businesses would use it for advertising. Now, obviously, since this bill is going to make a lot of online activities illegal, People are wondering, one, what are going to be the penalties for this illegal behavior? And two, since we're talking about illegal online behavior, can you use something like Tor or a VPN to circumvent these restrictions? Well, if we read section 11 penalties, we see in general, it shall be unlawful for a person to violate, attempt to violate, conspire to violate, or cause a violation of any regulation, order, direction, mitigation measure, prohibition, or any or other authorization or directive issued under this act, including any of the unlawful acts described in paragraph two. 
And under these specific unlawful acts, we see that it is no person may engage in any conduct prohibited by or contrary to or refrain from engaging in any conduct required by any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or other authorization or direction issued under this act. No person may cause or aid, abet, counsel, command, induce, procure, permit, or approve the doing of any act prohibited by or the omission of any act required by any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or other authorization or direction issued under this act. No person may solicit or attempt a violation of any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, etc. No person may conspire or act in concert with one or more other persons in any manner for any purpose to bring about or do any act that constitutes a violation of any regulation. No person may, whether directly or indirectly, go through any other person, make any false or misleading representation, statement, or certification, or falsify or conceal any material fact to the Department of Commerce or any official or any other executive department or agency. So, any VPN, any proxy, Tor, ITP, LokiNet, all of these technologies could let you circumvent this act. And if you were to use them to access something that's banned, like let's say there's a VPN server in Germany, you connect to it, and from there you go to access TikTok. Again, assuming that you're in the US, obviously for people outside the US, this doesn't apply to you. Well, at that moment, they are aiding you in circumventing this restriction. Now, some of you are probably thinking, okay, if I'm still allowed to use Tor or a VPN, how in the world could this actually be enforced? And that's the whole point, it can't. Even in countries like China that have the Great Firewall and CCP backdoors built into a lot of their hardware by default, I mean, they're manufacturing a lot of phones in China and with the amount of control that China has over their people, you gotta assume that there's backdoors they're using, that they're actually using in their hardware. But yet, people in China who really want to get around these restrictions still find a way. And if we scroll down a bit more to Section B, which lists the civil penalties, we see that the secretary may impose the following civil penalties on a person for each violation by that person of this act or any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or other authorization issued under this act. A fine of not more than $250,000 or an amount that is twice the value of the transaction that is the basis of the violation with respect to which the penalty is imposed whichever is greater. And under criminal penalties C, in general, a person who willfully commits, willfully attempts to commit, or willfully conspires to commit, or aids or abets in the commission of an unlawful act described in subsection A, shall upon conviction be fined not more than $1 million, or if a natural person may be imprisoned for not more than 20 years or both. So if you tried to hit up TikTok or something that's banned by this act with a direct connection, then you could be fined up to $250,000. But if you try to bypass the restrictions with a VPN or something like that, or if you're caught helping people do that uh, and you're a American citizen, then you could be fined uh, up to $1 million or you could spend up to 20 years in jail or both. So the core issue with this bill, besides it being something that's ridiculous and can't even really be enforced in the first place, is that it's going to give the secretary a tremendous amount of control, and not just secretary, but the government in general, a tremendous amount of control over what you're able to see and access on the internet, which is unconstitutional. So if our legal system works the way that it's supposed to, then I think this bill won't even be able to pass because of that. But in the meantime, contact your representatives if you are a fellow burger and tell them you don't want this. You don't want a restrict act. Restricting access to any technologies in order to protect the children should be the job of the parents and not the government.